Welcome to our 100th episode, A Dream of St. John Bosco, titled The Two Calms. You're watching The Miracles and Prophecies of St. John Bosco, a project of America Needs Fatima. I'm your host, Matthew Miller. Subscribe for new episodes every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Imagine you dream about a naval battle between two fleets, one of which is captained by the Pope. Two massive columns are the destination of the Pope's ship, and an enemy fleet is attempting to prevent it from reaching this safe haven. A massive battle ensues. This is the supernatural vision that God sent to Don Bosco in the form of a dream, which I will relate to you in this episode. On May 26, 1862, St. John Bosco had promised the boys that he would tell them something pleasant on the last or second to the last day of the month. And so, at the good night talk on May 30th, he narrated this parable, or allegory as he chose to call them. A few nights ago, he said, I had a dream that I would like to tell you about. It's true, dreams are nothing but dreams, but still, I'll tell them to you for your spiritual benefit. Try to picture yourselves with me on the seashore, or better still, on an outlying cliff. The vast expanse of water is covered with a formidable array of ships in battle formation, prows fitted with sharp, spear-like spars capable of breaking through any defense. All are heavily armed with cannons, incendiary bombs, firearms, and other explosives. They're all heading toward one stately ship, mightier than them all. As they close in, they try to ram it, set it on fire, and cripple it as much as possible. A flotilla escort shields this stately vessel, and the winds and waves are with the enemy. Amid this endless sea, two solid columns soar high into the sky a short distance apart. At the very top of one is a statue of the Immaculate Virgin, at whose feet a large inscription reads, Auxilium Christianorum, Help of Christians. On top of the other, far loftier and sturdier, supports a sacred host, proportional in size to the column, and bears beneath it the inscription, Salus Credentium, Salvation of Believers. The commander of the great ship is the Roman Pontiff. Seeing the enemy's fury and his auxiliary ship's grave predicament, he summons his captains to a conference. However, as they discuss their strategy, a furious storm breaks out and they must return to their ships. When the storm abates, the Pope again summons his captains as the flagship continues. But the storm rages again, and standing at the helm, the Pope strains every muscle to steer his ship between the two calms, from whose tops hang many anchors, and strong hooks linked to chains. The enemy fleet closes in to intercept and sink the flagship at all costs. They bombard it with everything they have, incendiary bombs, firearms, cannons, and every imaginable explosive. Now the battle rages on even more furiously. Pointed iron prows ram the flagship repeatedly, but to no avail. Unscathed and undaunted, it keeps on its course. At times, a formidable ram splinters a gaping hole in its hull. However, a breeze from the two columns immediately seals the gash. Meanwhile, enemy cannons blow up, firearms break and fall to pieces, and ships crack in two and sink to the bottom of the ocean. In blind fury, the enemy resorts to hand-to-hand -to -hand combat, cursing and blaspheming. Suddenly, the Pope falls, seriously wounded. He is instantly helped up, but struck down again, then dies. A shout of victory rises from the enemy, and wild rejoicing sweeps their ships. But no sooner is the Pope dead than another one takes his place. The captains of the auxiliary ships elected him so quickly that the news of the Pope's death coincided with that of his successor's election. The enemy's self-assurance wanes pitifully as they feel victory slip through their fingers. Breaking through all resistance, the new Pope steers his ship safely between the columns and moors it to both of them, first to the one with the sacred host and then to the other that is topped by the statue of the Virgin. At this point, something unexpected happens. The enemy ships panic and disperse, colliding with and sinking each other. 
Some auxiliary ships, which had gallantly fought alongside their flagship, were the first to tie up at the two columns. Many others had fearfully kept far away from the fight, cautiously waiting until the wrecked enemy ships vanished under the waves. Then they too head for the two columns, tie up at the swinging hooks, and ride safely and tranquilly beside their flagship. A great calm now covers the sea. Father Rua asked Don Bosco, what do you make of this? He answered, I think that the flagship symbolizes the church commanded by the Pope. The ships represent mankind, and the sea is an image of the world. The flagship's defenders are the laity loyal to the church. The attackers are her enemies who strive with every weapon to destroy her. The two calms, I'd say, symbolize devotion to Mary and the Blessed Sacrament. Father Rua didn't mention the Pope who fell and died. Don Bosco kept silent on this point, simply adding, Very well, Father, except for one thing. The enemy ships symbolize persecutions. Extremely grave trials await the church. What we have suffered so far is almost nothing compared to what will happen. The enemies of the church are symbolized by the ships which attempt to sink the flagship. Only two things can save us in such a grave hour, devotion to Our Lady and frequent Holy Communion. Let's do our best to use these two means and encourage others to use them everywhere. Good night. Don Bosco stated that the enemy represents the heresies and persecutions against the Holy Roman Catholic and Apostolic Church. The auxiliary ships represent the faithful who fought to defend it. Some are strong, but many are weak with little faith, demonstrated by ships that waited for the enemy vessels to sink before approaching the two columns. We must pray that we have the strength to do everything in our power to defend the church and the papacy through rejecting all heresy. Avoid sin, amend your lives, pray the rosary daily, receive Holy Communion frequently, and, most importantly, have confidence in Our Lady. The gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. Thank you all so much for watching our 100th episode, and if you think you may have missed one of our videos, just click on the playlist I put on the screen. If you'd like to enroll in our Saturday Mass intentions for the promoters of St. John Bosco, just click on this other link. God bless you and Our Lady keep you.